make the step up to heavy glide baits from smaller lures like crankbaits and soft plastics means I've had to scale up my tackle with heavier rods, reels, line and also the leaders. Glide bait leaders really take a lot of stick and it's not always from the fish. The forces generated just by casting can be almost as much as those from a tail walking pike and it's fair to say I cast a lot more than I catch. But also the stress of a jerky retrieve would be slow torture for an ordinary leader. So for this project I'm going to be making my own solid glide bait leaders. The wire I'm using is a solid stainless steel, designed specially for leaders. Even with a braking strain over £100, it has a relatively small diameter. To cover the ends of the wire, I'm using heat shrink tubing. And to make the connections to the layer, a heavy duty safety snap. For tools, I have a pair of ordinary wire cutters. And also, some jewellery pliers to make the loops. But a pair of round nose pliers would also do the job. And for the heat shrink, a lighter and a knife. The great thing about this packet of wire is on the rear it gives clear instructions on how to form the connecting loops. To start with I'm going to cut off 18 inches of wire and then with my jewellery pliers begin to make a loop 3 inches in from one end. I'm going to close it and bring the wire a little past 90 degrees. I can then make 4 turns twisting the wire together equally. Gently pushing on the tag end, I'm going to bend it back so it's at 90 degrees to the twists and also straighten up the length. I can now bend the tag around the shaft to make four barrel wraps. By making another bend I can form a handle which I can use to rock the wire backwards and forwards until it snaps off cleanly. And that's the first loop and twists complete. To reduce weed snagging I'm threading on a couple of pieces of heat shrink tubing a little over an inch long. I can then form the other loop and haywire twist as before. The heat shrink can be slipped over the wraps and then warmed until it contracts. If I let it cool for a few seconds, I can reheat the tail section and then making sure it's not too hot, stretch it to a tight fit. The tube can then be scored and the excess sliced and pulled off, leaving a neat finish. To add the snap, I can simply open it and pass it through the eye of the leader. Closing the snap again will make sure it keeps its position. And that's the leader complete. I don't normally attach swivels to this type of leader, but they can be added to the loop before the twists. Although the leaders will take some coiling for storage, I tend to store them straight in tubes. These can be made from scraps of PVC pipe, either overflow or half inch plumbing pipe. A trimmed down cork can be pushed snugly into one end to form a stopper. And for the other end, the neck and cap of a drinks bottle can be cut off with a hacksaw. With a bit of luck and the right size pipe, it may just be a case of pushing it into position. If the fit is loose, the joints will need to be filled with an adhesive. Because these plastics tend not to bond too well together with glue, I need to scuff both surfaces with a coarse file. Then I can mix up some quick setting epoxy. 
and once applied, I can slide the joint into position. 